I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Arakwell people of the Bunjalung Nation, and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Human Design Podcast with me, your host, Emma Dunwoody. I'm a qualified master coach and human behavior specialist, as well as being a qualified human design coach. And I work with clients every single day to answer the big questions. Who am I? Why am I here? And what is my purpose? I also assist them to transition from the person they think they should be to the person they really are on the inside. I teach people how to actually live their design instead of just knowing it. And if this is something that you want to do too, well, stay tuned or reach out for private coaching or human design unpacks where I show you exactly how to live your design. Hey, hey, everyone, and welcome to today's episode. I'm really excited to get into the next um theme, no, the next topic that I have for you in our HD roadmap. You know, it's super important for me that I can help you make your journey with human design and your learning with human design simple. It is a large part of why I'm on the planet. Um, It's there in my design that I want to simplify things for you. And I also know that with this explosion of human design that we're all experiencing right now, that one of the biggest challenges or the things that specifically prevent people from living in in alignment with their design is actually being able to easily and effortlessly implement what they're learning. You know, I even had this um, example last week. I was doing an unpack for someone really exciting and a potentially very exciting podcast. And she said that she had had five readings already. And even though she had had five readings already, she was like, can you just help me? I don't really know how I live this. Like how do, what what are the practicalities? Like, what does this actually mean? What are the actions that I take? How do I live and optimize my design? And I thought that was fascinating, to be honest, like five readings, someone who clearly has the money and access to um, whoever she wants to have a reading with or an unpack in my world and yet she was still at this place where she was confused and didn't know how to implement so this is really a perfect example of why I wanted to create this series for you guys because human design is complicated but it doesn't need to be it can be super simple there is so much information there are so many levels there are so many mathematical equations however do we need to understand them all to create our heaven on earth, to heal our trauma, to completely transform our lives so that we can manifest what we really want to manifest? The answer is no. We don't need to know all the nuances and details. One of the important things that that Ra Uruhu, who's the guy who channeled all of this information in, he said that very few people will ever want to know the depths of human design. However, There will be a very large group of people that want to know how they can just live with it day in, day out. So a lot of my mission on the planet is not only to give those people that don't want all the details, but just the really simple and implementable ways to live their design, that information. I also want to give you, um, the coaches out there, the best way to support and serve others with their design. All right. So that's a lot of the intention of this series. Um, It's actually one of the greatest intentions of all the work that I do. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. So today we're going to talk about type and strategy. Um, I know for those that have been around for a long time, um, maybe this seems, you know, old school for you, but I encourage you just to hang in there, listen to it, because you never know when you're going to hear something that really resonates with you that perhaps you haven't heard before or maybe you've heard it and it's just not meant anything until this moment. So I always encourage people to, um, you know, re-listen, to go over things, especially if your authority um, and your strategy has led you here today. So, okay, let's talk about type. What is type? Type is actually 
the highest level, if you like, of human design. It's a way that we can initially be put into categories. The interesting thing that I want you to understand is that type wasn't in what they call the revelation, okay, or the black book. It wasn't in the actual download. Why does that matter? Well, the reason why that matters is because many of us in the human design world have created all these rules about type, okay, and about the way our energy does or doesn't work or the way our aura is or isn't. And, and these rules have been expanded out into behaviours, okay? And the truth is that most of that is just made up. Most of it is um, made up by some people with a lot of experience, like Ra um, and his team, let's say. And then it's made up by other people who haven't had as many years or experience. They're just making assumptions. Um, and then it's okay. Like sometimes it's going to work for you and sometimes it's not going to work for you. So really this line three just first and foremost wants to call out that type isn't the be all and end all. It just isn't. Um, what is the, the most important thing we need to understand about type is our strategy. Okay. That really is the most important thing that we want to understand about type. Now at this high level, there are of course going to be similarities and which is why type is also beneficial because it helps us kind of with a jumping off point, especially now, this is where type is very helpful, especially when we are someone or we're serving or supporting someone who doesn't want all the details, that is in overwhelm. Often when we first come to human design, type is so beneficial because it keeps it a little bit more simple, a little bit more broad um, without having to dive into the details and feel overwhelmed. So this is where in the beginning of our journey, type really plays the biggest role of its role in human design, if that makes sense. The more you dive into the chart, into your chart, the more you understand the details, the nuances, the, uh, the little bits and pieces, then the less um, type is actually going to play a significant role other than specifically strategy, okay? Because we're going to get into definition, but definition is really the key. Yes, people out there are probably going, yeah, you can't say that because the projector is not the same as a manifesting generator. That's not what I'm saying. Um, what I'm saying is that understanding our definition, our definition is actually what creates our type. Okay. Our definition creates our type. And when we understand our definition, that is a lot more powerful than understanding our type. Why is that? Well, because if you, let's say you're, um, a projector that just has a spleen to the throat, nothing else defined, um, You've got no motors defined, no sacral defined. Um, so this is going to be a non-energy projector. So the way this person feels is going to probably resonate with a lot of the projector type speak, okay? And maybe a mental projector, maybe a self-directed projector. Some of these other configurations that have only a couple of centers defined um, and a lot of openness. However, what we at the moment are doing is we're comparing, let's say, a projector. I'm going to just stick with projector and then I'll flip to a different type um, like that that has a spleen to the throat, let's say, comparing it to someone who has all the centers defined except for the sacral and they just don't have a motor to the throat, okay? So they're a split definition. So that person is going to experience their energy very differently. They have three motors. They have a defined throat. They just don't have a motor to it. Um so that's going to be very different. So this is what I want you to understand is that the type is very much a jumping off point. Now, as a manifesting generator myself, like I am the energizer bunny when I'm on, but I'm equally exhausted, okay? So I'm not a person who can go 24-7, um, seven days a week, 12 months a year, 365 days. That just does not work for me. And I'm a manifesting generator that although I do have um, a motor to the throat, I also have a lot of openness in my chart. So other people's energy does have a very significant impact on me. So we will get to that. But I just want you to understand why I'm approaching type this way. So I want to go actually through them because I want to talk about um, each type very briefly, um, what makes you this type, and then we'll talk about strategy as well, okay? So first, let's use the, the metaphor of if 
where if there's a train, let's say there's a train and how each type kind of fits in. All right. So we start with the manifesto. The manifesto gets in the train, switches it on and has, you know, a creative urge that says, I want to go to this place. And with that creative urge and that manifesto listening to their connection to source and their desire to create and their inspiration, meaning that they can take action from their internal inspiration, creativity, connection to source, um, urge, creative urge, whatever the thing is that many people call it many different things. They can get into that train and they can start it. Now, as they start that train, what they're doing is they are inspiring other people into action. So with manifestors, again, we hear a lot of these really blanket rules. Like if you're a manifestor, you can start it, but you're not designed to finish it. Maybe. But what if you've got, I don't know, the 42 in your design? Then you are. You're designed to end a cycle. So there's no blanket rule. But what we want to understand is that with the manifesto, you're here to inspire people into action, which means you have to follow your own internal inspiration, your urge, your creative flow. Um, and as manifestors, you need to be unapologetically yourself because you have very specific people on the planet that you consciously will not know who that is. So don't try and work it out. Just follow your strategy and authority and they will show up for you. But you have very specific people that you need to inspire into action. Okay. So when you are being unapologetically yourself, not a people pleaser, because a lot of manifestors feel different from a young age, then they become a people pleaser. They know that they're different. They know that they're independent. They know that they want to do things differently, but they also know that people don't like that. So they become a people pleaser. The important thing to understand as a manifester is you have to really be unap unapologetically yourself. You are a little bit of a force of nature. You are not going to fit in and you're not designed to fit in. You're, in, you're designed to inspire people into, into action. Now, your um, strategy is, of course, to follow that inspiration. Okay. Um, it is very much all about following that internal um, flow, the urge and the inspiration. Your strategy is also to inform. Okay. Inspire people into action and inform. Okay. Informing is all about declaring the direction of your energy. That's all. It's not asking for permission. It's not like saying, I'm going to do this, waiting for feedback and then deciding to do something different because other people don't like it. Nah, -uh. this is a way that you just declare the direction of your energy. So what is super important for you to do is just practice that with the little things. Oh, I'm just going down to the shops. I'm going to take a shower. Um, I'm going to watch this thing. Oh, actually, I'm going to take an hour to study that thing. So just, you know, informing, informing on the little things. I want this for dinner. Um, and making sure that the people around you, you tell them, you inform them that you need to be informed. Okay. So you inform others, others inform you. It's really, really important. And then you can follow this inspiration, this creative flow. And, you know, we talk a lot about this, um, especially if you're an emotional manifester, be conscious that yes, you might want to you know, jump off and run off and do something. But as an emotional manifesto, you are going to have to just sleep on it a little bit. Um, however, most of the time for manifestors in a perfect ideal world, which we don't live in, um, it means that once that creative, creative flow is on, you're on. So as much as possible, give in to the creative flow, go and do the thing, be the thing, share the thing, um, because that's really your rock star superpower. Okay. And that's your guidance. That's like the universe is guiding you through this inspiration, um, this initiation, um, and through informing, like informing and being informed. Okay. So the next one we're going to look at is the generator. So we're on the train again. We're using the train metaphor. The generators got on this manifestor's train because, you know, they like this person, this, this, their ideas, their creativity, their vision. This is cool. Um, and they're inspired into action. And what's happened is all of a sudden they're lit up and excited. Okay. A generator is going to be lit up and excited by something. And then they're going to want to build something. Is that a business? It could be. Is that a family? It could be. Um, is that a 
you know, massive epic adventure could be, um, is that a new cake recipe could be, it could be anything, but it's this, you've been inspired into action. So the cycle is switched on and then you follow, you follow, you follow, you follow that being lit up. Now, as a generator, it's always about responding. Okay. Strategy is to respond. That doesn't mean sitting around on the couch and waiting for something to happen. You're responding in every moment. You look at something, you're going to respond to it. Um, something happens in your external world, you're going to respond to it. You're going to be learning something, you're going to respond to it. So in most cases, you're responding in, you know, most moments almost. You really responding is happening all the time. What you want to remember is that responding is a felt thing. It's a felt thing in the body. Like, uh-huh, I've got energy for this. Uh-uh, I don't have energy for this. So paying attention to the sacral response, uh uh-huh, uh-uh, and ultimately feeling like you have energy for something or you don't have energy for something, and then acting from that place. So it's a yes or a no. Um, Sometimes generators can feel a maybe, so just sit on it. You know, if you have a maybe, then that's exactly that because the energy has the wisdom in the now. Um, I actually meant to say, so with a manifester, what makes you a manifester is a motor that is connected to the throat through definition, okay? So a motor is the um, solar plexus, the root center or the will center in a manifesto. They will, a manifesto will always have an undefined sacral, okay? Then the generator will always have a defined sacral and then whatever else they have defined, at least one other center. Um, and they are designed to always be responding, um, that's that that cycle. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Always knowing whether you've got energy. They're inspired into action. Then they follow what they're lit up about. Okay. Then we have the manifesting generator. The manifesting generator is a hybrid of the generator and the manifester. Um, the way we know that we have a manifesting generator is that we have a defined sacral and we have a motor connected to the throat. Okay. So that motor can be connected through channels that go via other centers and slash or it can be it can be connected directly from a motor to the throat um, that might look like the 3420 which is from the sacral to the throat which is like the pure manifesting generator channel or it could be the solar plexus to the throat through the man through a manifested channel um, if you have that configuration you can feel a little bit more manifestory just a little bit more and what i mean by that configuration is a direct channel from a motor so it has to be either the solar plexus um well the solar plexus the will center or the sacral because we can't go direct from the to the throat from the root center um but otherwise they're going to go through center so it might go from the solar plexus to the sacral and up through the G center to the throat. So that they might feel a little bit less manifestory. But again, it all depends on depends on your energy and your experiment. So just play around with that. Um, what specifically is different about the manifesting generator is that they're non-linear beings. Okay. So they tend to be a little bit superhuman. They will tend to go a little bit faster. They will tend to be a bit messier. They like to sort of make and break things because they're always looking for the hack. They're looking for the faster way to do things, the faster way to get to an end goal. But they are very much these non-linear beings. A generator can find something that they love and stick to it and build it forever. Whereas a manifesting generator will tend to find something that they love right now and then potentially move on to something else later and then potentially even put the, the multiple different things together in something um, further down the track. Um, ultimately, the manifesting generator is meant to be different, not designed to fit in, um, do things differently, find faster ways. They can tend to be a little bit um, superhuman. Um, now, the strategy for a manifesting generator is to respond and inform. Okay, so the same goes for both. Responding and informing um, is, is the strategy for the manifesting generator. Um, there was something else I wanted to add. So both generators and manifesting genera generators, I want you to remember something very, very important. When we are responding to the things that we want, that is important. However, we will also be faced with times where we will want to quit things. 
because the generator and MG energy is always a growth, then a plateau, a growth, then a plateau. And often when we hit that plateau stage with our energy, MGs think that they're no longer, or and generators think that they're no longer lit up. So they must quit the thing that they're not lit up about. This is not true at all. This is a time of integration. This is a time of rest, recovery, play, um, to you know, let your actual manifestation move in through the layers of your aura into the 3D reality. Um, so if you are in this plateau and you think it's time to um, quit something, you must be super vigilant about quitting on something external. What do I mean by that? Um, let me give you an example. This growth plateau energy was really prominent in my 20s when I was in advertising. Um, I would start a job. I would love it. I was lit up. I was excited. It was so much fun. And then all of a sudden I would be like, mm, I either need a promotion or a new job. This is boring me now. Um, and in that time when I was like, okay, maybe I'd have I'd like a new job. I would, someone would call me. I would get headhunted. I would go for an interview. I would get the job. This literally happened four, four or five times for me. One call, one interview, one new job. And then that gives me something external of me to quit the other job. Okay. So especially when you are in your plateau, you want to be super vigilant that am I quitting from something that I'm responding externally of me? Okay. Because if you're not, then chances are that you're quitting something that you're not ready to quit yet. Maybe it's something that you will in the future, but there's still a lesson to be learned, or maybe it's actually something that is just about to enter a new growth phase. So you just have to, you know, ride that out. Then we have a projector. So a projector is a non-sacral being. It just means that they do not have a defined sacral and they do not have a motor to the throat, okay? So they do not have a direct um, uninterrupted line of definition from a motor, which is the solar plexus, the will center, the sacral and the root center. They're the four motors. Um, they do not have a connected area of definition to the throat. So they, that's what makes a projector. So a projector can be anything from two defined centers to all of the centers defined except for the sacral, okay? So there's a lot of room for um, variation within projectors, probably the most of all the types. They're probably also the ones that can often feel like they don't relate because they, as I said, they can have two centers defined or they can have them all except the sacral defined. And that's a very different um, feeling and experience. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to definition. So the projector is here as the guide. Everywhere as a projector, you have an undefined center. This is where you have the ability to see into, really deeply see into the other person's energy. Okay. So this is why we talk about um, projectors being guides because they have this ability and everyone with an undefined center in your undefined center, you are amplifying and reflecting back the energy of that center. So the less centers you have defined, the more ability you have to see into other people's energy. Um, and with projectors, they're on the planet to guide energy. Where is energy being used efficiently? Where is it being used inefficiently? Where is it being used in alignment? Where is it being used out of alignment? So they have this ability to read energy in a way that is super, um, super powerful, okay? It's wherever they have undefined centers. So we have the strategy of waiting for an invitation. One of the fundamental things to understand about being a projector is that you're on the planet to be seen and recognized. Um, now, you have to see and recognize yourself first. You have to value yourself first. And one thing that I will say is don't sit around with a bunch of projectors or bitching and moaning about how the rest of the world don't see you because that is just a projection of your mindset, of your identity. All the powerful reflected, sorry, projectors that I know, that I work with, that I love, that are a part of my world, they do not hang around bitching about being unseen. They actually get out in the world, value themselves, and they are magnets for people, well, like me, like the rest of us. So you have to value your talent. You have to value your gifts. Like two of my favorite projectors, other than, of course, my husband, um, are my PT, my personal trainer and her sister. One's a mental projector. I'm going to have them on the podcast because they are off the charts. They blow out 
all the bullshit about projectors having no energy, um, how, you know, yeah, all of it. It's just, they're just amazing. But what is really incredible is that these two women, they are like, I don't know, like the, I am like a moth to their flame. I can't help but be really drawn to them. They are so easy and effortless to be around. They are so in alignment. However, projectors who don't value themselves and they're trying to force their wisdom and their greatness onto others, they feel very uncomfortable. You don't want to be around them. Um, in fact, you will consciously and unconsciously resist them. So what I want to say to projectors out there is we freaking need you. We've got the train. The manifester has inspired is is following their creative urge and their creative urge and the actions they're taking are inspiring the generator and the manifesting generator into action to build something then we have the projectors that are like you're doing a great job over there building and inspiring how about you do a little bit more of this and a little bit less of that now we need to be together to be doing these things we can't be separate if you want to be seen you want to be seen by the people who can really value your wisdom they can really use your wisdom and it's not to say that other projectors can't because they absolutely can. But if you want to really have a big impact, then you want to be with the, the sacral types because you want to be helping them build whatever the magic is that they're here to build, all right? Um, then we go to, have I got everything? For, I think I've got everything for projectors. Then we go to our beautiful and incredibly powerful reflectors. This is another place I really want to myth bust okay so first and foremost what does the definition look like you've got all open centers which means you have this ability to um read energy so as i say i say this over and over and over again about all the reflectors i've worked with that you have the ability to see the way it's almost like energy is coming towards you like a wave you can read energy whether it's of a room where a business is going where an individual is going like there is just this ability to just like read energy now um a the strategy for a reflector is 28 days what does that mean it means it's an entire moon a entire cycle of the moon through your chart because this is where the consistency comes from and when we're talking about consistency um why your consistency comes from the moon and other types comes from um something else it's because it comes from their definition okay so when the, when their chart is created so the sun um is like that birth date is that initiate initiate um of the birth or the sun cycle right or the birth date of the natal chart um and then that creates a definition in a chart colored in centers right so that's why the other four types or three types in the hybrid um are sun charts or sun designs and you are a moon because it's actually as the moon moves through your chart that's where your consistency comes from their consistency consistency comes from their definition their colored in centers okay um now the the primary thing for being a reflector is that you are not fluffy you are not wishy-washy you are not a freaking unicorn i hate when you get called unicorns all the time because it, you are freaking magical, but it just implies that there's like a gentleness and a subtleness to you. Um, yes, I've seen a lot of reflectors that are can be a bit fluffy. However, my experience is a lot of the reflectors that I work with, they're incredibly powerful beings because they're so willing to go with their the flow of their energy, um, how things sort of shift and change for them. They always give themselves more time a lot more time to make decisions. Um, they get to know how they feel in an environment, how people make them feel, um, all of these things. And then they trust that feeling. They trust what basically the subtle energy feedback is giving them all the time. They begin to build that trust muscle. And once they build that trust muscle, then they can really know what is correct for them um, and what is not correct for them. Ultimately, they are a mirror. So if you have a reflector in your life, it's really important to understand that in many cases, you're going to be projecting your stuff onto them. What you see in them is in you. Now, as you hear me say all the time, this is the same for all humans. We are always projecting our stuff onto the other. However, the way it's a little bit different with the reflector is that we can't see past ourselves to see them. 
unless we are really conscious. So what that means is if you have a reflector in your life, take the time to really get to know them, what they like, who they are, um, how they, they ebb and flow, where do they feel the most comfortable, who do they feel the most comfortable with, ask them lots of questions, because until you start to get super curious with them, you're just seeing a reflection of yourself. Um, and as a reflector, what I really encourage you to do is know that you have this magic to feel into all the energies all the time, and they're always flowing through you. And if you can trust or when you can trust that ebb and flow and that ability to flow with all the different energies, then you become really, really confident in the being that you are and you can become very very powerful i i think there's so many reflectors in my life they're incredibly incredibly powerful beings um so energy wise one of the other things that i've not had consistent results i hear a lot of people saying reflectors like have no energy this isn't true um in my experience okay so this is just my line three experience a lot of the reflectors i know yes can be tired out by people however there is one fundamental um, caveat to that. The reflectors I know that are really smashing it in life, like they're really succeeding, they have such epic boundaries around the people they hang out with, the energies they put themselves into or around. So people and environments. These epic boundaries mean that they are only around people that give them energy, that feel easy to be around, that their energy feels good in. And then they have plenty of energy. Like some of them, I would like one in particular I'm thinking of, I'm like, I'd swear she was a manifesting generator. She has loads of energy, but she also has, as I said, epic boundaries, epic standards. She doesn't allow other people's energy to um, manipulate her energy and impact her identity. So there you go. That is the five types. They are all the strategies. Um, if you've got your chart, you're starting to understand beliefs, this is the next place just to play with is always strategy, okay? This is where we're starting to get to know our own energy as well. Um, I'm starting to understand what gives us energy and what takes energy away from us. So this is what you want to start to play, play with when you get to type and strategy. strategy. Strategy is also the piece of this is how the universe speaks to you. So play it, pay attention to what she's saying. Uh, because she's trying to guide you. Next week, we're going to talk about authority, which is the other piece to that. That's your internal wisdom. So when your strategy and your authority are talking together, it's a communication loop, okay? And that's what we want to be listening to and playing with. So that is it for today. I trust you got so much out of it. And I'm so excited that or I'm so excited to bring you the rest of this series. If you liked this episode, please go onto Spotify, onto Apple Podcasts and leave us a review because it's super important that we get this human design made simple into as many people's ears as possible so we can create this incredible new paradigm that we're moving towards. Thanks everyone. Bye for now. Thanks everyone for being here all the way to the end of the podcast. I hope you got lots of value out of it. I certainly had a lot of fun doing it. Could I please ask that you share this podcast with friends if you found it valuable? And also, bonus points, could you leave a review for me as well on Apple? It would be greatly appreciated. If at any point you would like to be on the podcast or you've got questions that you'd like me to discuss on the podcast, by all means, get on my socials and DM me. Everything you need is there in the show notes. Have an awesome day. Bye for now.